Most of the people who wrote at that particular time drank in my days. At that stage, all the, the famous writers were dedicated drinkers in the first instance, you know. So you would have seen Paddy Kavanagh, well and truly, with, with a good drop of drink on board. <laughs> Paddy Kavanagh was a devil for tearing up paper. Exactly, he. I, I, I had an experience of that. I was in those days there was a there was a late sports press, and I was uh, had had got it. Walked into my dad's, got myself a drink, and put the the press on the me arm as you, while I was reading another paper. And he said, "My cabinet came up to me and says, that's a late one.'" I said, "Yeah, it is, yeah." And he took it away, looked at it, and all he muttered was the F word three or four times, the humpy bastard, which was referring to a jockey called Doug Smith who rode horses at a particular time, who had, who Kavanagh obviously had backed his mounts and they weren't successful. And he cursed and muttered, more muttered than cursed aloud, you know. And then he looked at the next day's race and then he rolled my paper up, shoved it back on the me elbow. He didn't say that, yes, I, uh, you know. That was Kavanagh. Kavanagh was a, Cam was a, a, a country man like myself, came to Dublin, but didn't, he came from the, the low hills of Monaghan and he didn't change a bit when he came to Dublin. He, needed, he didn't adapt to Dublin manners at least, like he, he was a country man of the, of the, of the hill type. Being now was different. Uh, Being was an exhibitionist, <coughs> needed attention. And if you weren't looking at him, he'd, he had one button open, he'd open them all down, like, you know, he'd want to look rakish, you know. He wanted to be the attention. And if he wasn't getting attention, he would become outrageous. Well, I don't have, I don't have many unhappy memories. It's, it's, uh, I suppose the happiest day was the day we came here, opened <coughs> and started in Grogan's. It transformed this place from a quiet backwood, which South William Street was nearly 40 years ago, a very backwood street. It was the garment area of Dublin, so a lot of life died in this street at 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night, you know, but along came, we came along with Paddy O'Brien and we'd done a Pipe Piper thing, we took them over from my dad's the good, the bad and the ugly. We had a fam very famous central figure to this bar from, from, from the day we opened until two years ago when he died, or less than two years ago, was a man called Liam Brady. A great individual. Liam would sit up in the corner and he would gather a crowd of people around him, you know, while he regaled them with fabulous stories. He, he was in the IRA was involved in the robbery of the magazine fort in the Phoenix Park. Uh, he, he lived and dwelled on that, he was interned. And he had a group of younger people around him and he regaled them with stories about his exploits as a, as a Republican soldier. Uh, apologies to the fiction writers as far as I'd be concerned. You know, he, he was good at it, he told good stories. He was a central, he was a very central figure to this pub. Greatly missed. Did the special branch used to have a car? Oh, yeah, yeah, they kept an eye on us, afraid we... Uh, the special branch were good at that. They, they kept an eye on me and my clients very much so. So, oh, yeah, he was afraid we'd get lost and afraid we'd fall into bad company, you know. They were very, those people are very, very, very... All for your own good, of course, to tell you when they'll be taking you away. All for your own good, in case you get killed, you know. We have an idea that we put up a new art show every Christmas. I love it. It's nice to be able to look around you and see, rather than dancing lights on the wall, as you see in some places, to see real vibrant creativity. I feel that a lot of pubs have lost their way. The great Celtic Tiger, among um, RIP, by the way, <coughs> uh, he, it destroyed a lot of bars. 
they, they extended, extended, extended the built lounges for four and five, six hundred people. They thought they could fill them in seven days of the week. They weren't living in the real world. We were losing the old traditional bar, of which we, which I would like to think we are one of them. There's a few of them left around us here. Luckily enough, there's still a few of them. But even those who are... People, really, when they go into a bar, it's... It's the next thing to their sitting room, and for a lot of people, it is their sitting room where they communicate, where they talk. Uh, you know, you, you go into a pub where there's a bit of communication, and you're fe feeling down and depressed. You're no longer lonely if you can meet a group of people and talk to them. <laughs> but nowadays, at six o'clock in the evening, you have this background music, dance music, house music, call it what you like. Bump, bump, bump. You can't hear your ears. You can't have a conversation. Like the, I'm happy in Grogan's, I suppose, is the answer to that. And I, like, like any other human being, I'm up and down, but I, I think I'm happy in Grogan's. Grogan's makes me happy. I'm at an age where I could have put the, put the feet up and decided to give up to retire, but I don't think I want to do that. I, like, I, I, I love people too much, I like people too much. People is the currency I like to have around me, you know?